What's up, guys? I'm Todd Wynn, pro staffer with St. Croix Rods, and I am at 2023 St. Croix Rods Customer Appreciation Day, Customer Appreciation Day, and we are celebrating 75 years of making the best rods on earth. And uh, it's a great event. Um, I know some of you guys uh, can't attend, uh, but that's why we have online and we are here online. And uh, today we are going to talk about Great Lakes smallmouth tactics. Um, I'm a smallmouth junkie. I love chasing them around to different Great Lakes. And um, I'm going to use Sturgeon Bay as an example. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some tips on uh, spring and summer. And uh, we're going to go through a couple things, and hopefully this will help you guys have a little bit more fun on the water chasing smallmouth. All right, so we're going to go through a couple different things. Um, we're going to go through spring areas to target, uh, bait selection in the spring, um, what rods I like to pair up with, with my baits. Um, and then we're going to go through that in the summer because it changes a little bit. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys can uh, pick up a few tips. And if you already know these, um, wonderful. And, um, you know, uh, come along with us on the ride. Let's, uh, let's start this. All right, spring areas to target. What are, we, what are we looking for in, you know, what are some things we, we need to look for? Uh, number one, fine, warmer water. Um, whether this is a different side of the bay, whether it's 100 yards away, finding warmer water is going to be a big key for you to finding where the smallmouth is in these bays. Um, you know, somewhere, you know, if you're sitting in 52 degree water, you might find a pocket that's 54, 55. And that's where they're going to generally be. Um, got a good story for you. We were in Sturgeon Bay uh, in Door County in one of the bays up north. And uh, we were roaming around in, uh, I would say, I think it was like around 54, 55 degree water. And we, we saw some fish scattered roaming around. We go on to the other side of the bay, the north side of the bay. Water was 58 and it was boom. We saw seven pounders swimming around like it was going out of style. Um, and so they like to congregate in warmer water. So finding water, warmer water, whether it's based on wind direction, current, um, those are going to be keys that you need to, to look for. Um, what are some things we're going to target? Shallow flats. Um, where the fish are going to go from spring to spawning. All right. We're, we're, so shallow flats is where they like to spawn. They like to spawn in rocky areas, um, gravel areas. So we're going to target shallow flats where they're kind of coming up to those um, to those spawn areas. Um, just mentioned spawning areas. Um, you know, a lot of areas you, you want to see where they spawn and um, they're going to start to move up to those areas. And so I got some examples and slides coming up that will show you what to look for and where to look for them. Um, another area of spawning areas other than spawning areas is transition areas. You know, smallmouth love transition areas. They, they like to hang around and roam between rock and rock and pebble um, areas where, you know, there's a difference between rock and pebble. They like to, where sand turns into gravel. They love to hang around there or where their sand turns into rock. So those are called transition areas. They're gonna want to hover around those areas. So finding those areas with your electronics is very key. So learn to use your electronics. You learn to use your, your Hummingbird 360 and find where that transition areas are. You know, um, on your graphs, those hard bottoms are gonna be light up really bright, right? So where it lights up really bright to where it lights up to more darker areas, that, that's a transition area. So you're gonna to wanna to target those areas. Um, another thing, especially up in Door County, is a lot of the bays have um, dock trenches. Um, 
you know, they have a lot of the bays are real shallow. So um, these houses with bigger boats, they have to dig out and trench out a pathway for their boats to get out to the deeper water. So guess what? Those are going to be great areas in the springtime to find fish. They love those dock trenches. Play the wind. Wind is going to be a huge factor in finding that warmer water, especially in the spring. When you're on the bay side of Door County, if you get a west wind or if you get a northwest wind, it's going to blow straight into the bay and it's going to blow all that cold water out from the bay into, um, into those bays and it's going to cool down that water. So, you know, you got to always check the wind. Um, you know, I like to use WindFinder. It's a great app. Um, you can download it onto your, um, your Android or your iPhone. And I'm constantly looking at those wind, which direction, the speed, um, when I'm up where, whenever I go somewhere. Um, so big key is to, to know which way the wind's going and, and how fast the wind is. Uh, before you come up to these areas for spring fishing, great way to do your homework or to learn about that area is use Google Maps. Uh, use the, the, you know, the, the Google Maps, and, and I'll give you some examples of the Google Maps on how to use it. For instance, here is a Google satellite map <coughs> excuse me, of Little Sturgeon Bay, which is at the bottom. And then if you move kind of to the right from left to right, you're going to go to Riley's Bay, and then you're going to go to Sand Bay. Um, those areas are probably going to hold the biggest fish pre-spawn, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> the, the Sturgeon Bay tournaments are usually one down this way. Um, I, I'm not giving any secrets away. Um, you'll see 100 boats in the little Sturgeon area on a weekend. So there's no secrets out here. Um, whether you get there the right time to find those big fish is is key. So uh, if you look at Little Sturgeon on the left of your screen, um, if you look at the, um, the right shoreline, if you're looking at the picture, you're going to see a big flat area, like light sand, light color. That's going to be your flat area, okay? Those are going to be like your kind of um, sandy area, and you see how it transitioned a little darker, um, you know, water, then you're going to see a little more mossy rocks. That's where they tend to group up pre-spawn. So all that area on the right shoreline, we call that, um, it starts out if you go from the launch straight over, that's called the cedars. A lot of people fish the cedars. Uh, on opening weekend, it was probably 80 boats in a 300 yard radius of that, that um, the cedars area. So no secret, um, if you look at the middle of Little Sturgeon, that's called Squaw Island. If you look at the light patches of sand, um, that gets hammered. That fishes a lot, but there's always big fish on there. Um, so that's Squaw Island. Um, all that is really good. All the flats is really good. Um, and then when I talk about the trenches, you can kind of see on the right shoreline of Little Sturgeon, and then also on the bottom corner of Riley's Bay, you see those little dark water trenches coming out from houses. Those are what I mean by dark water or deep water trenches. Um, the light spot might be two feet, a foot and a half, three feet. Those trenches are probably six feet. So the fish like to gather in those trenches. Uh, so depending on the wind, where the wind's going. So if, for instance, this bay sets up, if you get any kind of northwest wind, it's going to blow that cold water right into these bays and it's going to flush out the warmer water. So, um, <clears throat> so you got to play the wind got to figure out where the warm, warmer water is. Uh, but these are all good springtime areas to target smallmouth bass in, in Door County. Um, this is another area, that, uh, very popular. This is the main shipping canal, canal and it is, it's called shipping, it's called Sturgeon Bay. And uh, so if you look at the right side, of the shoreline where it says Westwood Shores Waterfront Resort. Um, that's kind of like a pinkish hotel. And then Bayshore Inn is kind of like a grayish blue hotel. From there, you go all the way down. 
you see how there's light colors? That flat comes all the way out to the deep water to like middle of the channel almost, if you see it. That's all like anywhere, like even in the middle of the, the bay, it's like six to 10 feet of water. So it's not even deep. So that's what we call the Sturgeon Bay Flats. You'll see a lot of boats out there in the spring. Um, a lot of fish roam up there before they go shallow to spawn and they're roaming around in those flats. So great area to target, um, big community holes. On the weekend, you'll see, you know, 60 boats on the flats. So, um, you know, don't, uh, you got to get used to, to people, people getting close to you. So it's just the way it is. Um, so what are some springtime baits that um, are on my jacket all the time that I like to use? Um, so the, the first bait is uh, a swim bait. And when I fish anything in the spring, I like to downsize my baits. Smaller profile, these fish are coming from deep water. They're coming from their hibernation in the winter. They they don't like to move as much. They're like fish like me. We're lazy. I we don't want to work for our food. You want to put a piece of wagyu in front of my face, not like 100 yards from me and make me run for it, right? So perfect example. Like, so you want to put it in their face. You want smaller baits. They don't want a big bait at this time of year. So what am I using for swim bait? I'm using 330 seconds or one eight ounce heads, and I'm running like a three inch bait. So in the picture there, that's a three inch mag draft. I'm sorry, not a mag draft. It's a three inch spark shad by Mega Bass. So um, that's one of my favorites. Uh, you can use like a two eight or a three three tie tech, but I like the two eight better. Um, what colors do I use? I'm more of a natural. IU, green pumpkin, um, watermelon, clear water, natural colors. Uh, the rod that I like to use on a swim bait is you're going to see me throw it predominantly on a 7.3 medium extra fast action rod. Um, I'm a legend tournament guy. Uh, I like my legend tournaments, so I use the 7.3 medium extra fast. Um, that's going to be in my hands a lot in the spring, um, throwing a swim bait. It's a bait that I have a lot of confidence in. Um, another two baits that you'll see um, is the tube and the Ned rig. Um, pretty standard. Um, you know, color wise, like that sand color on there is a really good color. Uh, Ned rigs, um, green pumpkin is, is probably one of my favorite colors. And, you know, tube wise, I like the two seven five in the spring, smaller profile. I use it on like a quarter ounce is probably the heaviest, but I'm more of an eighth ounce, uh, in the springtime I'm fishing shallower. And so, um, I like the eighth ounce on on my tubes, uh, good tubes. I like Howie's tubes from Howie's shop in Sturgeon Bay. Um, Get Bit makes some good tubes. Um, so, you know, pretty standard. Um, Ned's, uh, Yamamoto, Ned Senko is a great Ned. Um, they float. So, um, you know, great Ned's. And uh, rod setup for that is uh, I'm usually using a Legend X 610 medium extra fast. Um, I like... I don't like the longer rods usually for my tube than that. I like the 610. It's very versatile for me. I like that medium action instead of medium light. And I like that extra fast tip um, for the hook set. So that's a, a pretty standard rod for me, 610. Uh, my line setup for all these and pretty much 95% of my setups uh, for finesse fishing is I'm using 10 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid and high vis green reason I use high vis green is when I'm making long casts and a lot of times before my bait gets down to the bottom, it's getting hit by a small mop. And so that line will jump. And so if I didn't have high vis green, I, I wouldn't be able to see it. And, you know, as I get older, my eyes get worse. Um, so I want that visibility. So high vis green, and then I'm using an cigar gold label, eight pound leader. Uh, it's my go-to leader. It's the thinnest in diameter, the strongest. And um, I'm using a um, Alberto knot, pretty simple. Um, you know, if you guys are looking for some tutorials, um, my Facebook page is Keeping It Real with Big T. I'll have some stuff on there with knot tying and, 
and these swim baits and, and all these different baits. Um, so you can check that out. Um, the next bait um, that, you know, came out a couple of years ago that I've kind of really put in my arsenal is the Dark Sleepers. Um, great bait by Mega Bass. Um, you, you can pop it, you can swim it, you can drag it. Pretty versatile bait. Um, I like the small quarter ounce size. Um, I think it's two and a quarter or two and a half inch uh, for springtime, even in the summer. Um, it's really good um, versatile bait. Acts like a goby, gets dragged around. Um, you can use, you can throw those on 610 or 73, either one. Uh, medium extra fast rod is, is probably my go-to for the dark sleeper. Um, the next um, summer or uh, spring bait that's always on my deck is a hair jig. Everybody loves to throw the fuzz ball, right? It's well known. It was a secret for a long time ago, um, but now everybody throws it. Um, everybody's whipping a hair jig. And uh, my go-to is probably a 332nd uh, on a hair jig. And so to me, you can use different, like a same rod for different presentations. But to me, if I throw a hair jig, you got to have the proper rod and reel to it. Um, hands down, I, you know, you just can't throw a 332nd hair jig on a medium heavy rod. Um, you, you're just not, it's going to whip 10 feet and not go anywhere. So you need a rod that's long, that gives you the distance, and you need a flexible that gives you a really soft tip to, to really throw that um, hard to throw that out there. So what I use is a Legend Tournament 710 uh, medium light extra fast tip um, that just whips it out there. Um, same line, 10 pound Seaguar Smackdown, eight pound gold label leader. And you can really whip out there. Um, little, little tip or for you, take a little piece of either a Ned Senko or a Ned, like a, a Z-Man's uh, small TRD, put a little black one, cut it about a little inch, put that in your hook all the way to the keeper underneath the hair. What that's going to do, it's going to give you a little body. It's going to give you a little weight to make those long casts into the wind. And then it's also going to keep your bait up a little bit from the bottom with the buoyancy of the, the little bait. So good little... Um, little tip for you there. Uh, just throw a little piece of plastic on there to help you make longer casts. Um, another great springtime. Everybody loves to throw the jerk bait. I'm a mega bass guy. I love my uh, Vision 110s. Um, you know, uh, great bait. And, you know, I, I throw it on a 6.8 medium extra fast, uh, pretty standard jerk bait rod. Come, you know, I throw the Legend Tournament, but Victory has one and Mojo and, and Bass X. So, um, you know, you can you can choose whatever price point that you're comfortable spending and still get that length and action, which is a 6.8 medium extra fast. Um, so everybody throws a jerk bait, um, great bait. Uh, I usually don't throw it only in the wind. Uh, when it's kind of calm, I usually don't throw it. Uh, but that's me. But I know a lot of friends who've caught them on calm days. So, um, so these are my spring baits that I, um, you know, usually are on my deck. Uh, one of the key things, like I said, smaller profile baits. Um, they're gonna, you know, these fish are like I said, they're coming from hibernation. They're gonna want smaller things. They don't want to chase around. So, um, smaller profile is a big key. Um, Another big key, slow, slow, slow. If you're, if you're not feeling the bottom, you're going way too fast. Um, what I like to do is I like to teach people, make a long cast, wait for it for a few seconds, let it count down, and then reel it. And then if you're feeling the bottom, reel a little faster. So now you're just above the bottom. If you're reeling it too fast um, on a 330 seconds hair jig or an eighth ounce swim bait, you're not going to get it to the bottom and you're all, all you're doing is just running at a foot below the surface. Um, and that's not where the fish are. So slow, slow, slow. Um, all right. Now we're going to get to summer areas to target little difference. Um, we're going to focus more on 
there's summer patterns. And, um, you know, when I did the live, a guy asked me, what's the difference between summer and spring or where do you, you know, maybe I should rename the seminar pre-spawn and summer pat or like post-spawn patterns. Um, you know, springtime, I, I think of pre-spawn and summer, I think of past post-spawn where they're kind of in their um, predictable spots in the summer. That's where they hang out for the summer and, and they like to come up to feed during the, the early mornings and the afternoon, uh, later afternoons and evening. Um, so what are some areas to target in the summer? Reefs and shoals, great area. Whether you're fishing the Great Lakes, Mille Lacs, um, you know, where you're fishing St. Lawrence River, anything that has humps with reefs or shoals are going to be dynamite. They're usually holding fish. Why are they holding fish? They're usually holding gobies and bait fish there. That's why, because they can swim and cover themselves up in those crevices and hide from the smallmouth. So what, guess what? Smallmouths are going to hang around there waiting for their chance to pounce on these things. So uh, what's another area? Wind blowing points and shorelines. Uh, anytime you get uh, wind blowing into a, a point, it's going to wash the bait fish and pin them against that shoreline. And those smallmouth are going to ambush them and wait. They're just going to pin these fish into one area and they're just going to attack, attack, attack. Transitions. We talked about transition areas. Uh, look for areas where sand is turning into rock, to gravel. Great areas where fish like to hang out. For some reason, these smallies, they love those transition areas. Why? I don't know if anybody knows, but they just, they do. They love hanging around where, whether it's grass meeting rock or rock meeting gravel or sand meeting gravel or sand meeting rock. They love those areas. Those are great transition areas. Um, Instead of using Google Maps in the summer where you can't see the shoals and as much, you're going to need to use your Lake Master app or Navionics app. Um, you know, I use Lake Master. It's great. It's a free app. If you buy a Hummingbird unit, you get a subscription for a year. Um, we will show some slides on what the Lake Master app looks like and how to utilize it um, to the best. Uh, for you to, to learn how to target where the smallmouth are. So um, get the app, learn how to use it. Okay, here's some slides that I shot with my Lake Master app, okay? And, um, you know, I set, my, uh, I set my contour depth. So red is three feet and, sh three feet and under. Uh, it's usually areas that I mark for me not to run. Um, I don't want to be losing a lower unit out there. Um, green, I, I set it, I believe, at like, I want to say it was four feet to like 12 feet. Okay. And then blue, I set 13 to 25. Uh, and these are, these are parameters that you can put in. These are parameters that work for me. So you can kind of plug them in. And so if you look at the map, um, the, the left one is Hat Island, which is a little bit south of Fish Creek. Um, and you can run easily out there from like Ephraim Harbor um, or from Fish Creek or Egg Harbor. Um, so if you look at that Hat Island, you'll see where there's like a little underwater hump just south of the island. Um, if you look at the green areas, that's kind of a shallow water ridge or a shoal, and that green area is going to be four feet to 12 feet. Great area for you to target. Um, deeper water, you can try the deeper side, which is going to be a little deeper. Uh, same thing between the, that little hump and the island itself. There's a lot of green, a lot of blue that you can fish. So um, that's a good example of an area to fish in Door County in the summer. Um, by the way, there's no secrets. You know, I don't know, some people may be like, why is Todd showing these islands? There's no secrets out there. Everybody knows you get out there on a summer day, there's 15 boats on each island. Um, the map on the right is Larson's Reef. That's on the lower end of Door County. Um, that's right outside of Sand Bay. So you can go to those that from like Little Sturgeon or the Quarry Launch, and the, the Shipping Canal. Um, those are great. Um, so if you see all that green area, 
that's a whole shoal out there. That's a whole reef. So that's a great area to fish. Um, just roam around there, look for fish with your sonar or front facing or visually with your eyes, you'll see packs swimming and, and you got to make long casts to them. Um, so those are some areas. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. And here's two pictures of a couple other islands up north. Uh, the left one is the cluster of islands. We call it the islands. Uh, pretty much Adventure Island, uh, Jack Island, Strawberry. Uh, these are very community spots. Everybody's out there in the summer. Um, great areas, holds a lot of fish, holds a lot of big fish. Um, another community area on the right map is um, Sister Island. Uh, that's outside of Sister Bay, a little bit north of Dor uh, Northern Door County. And if you look at look at all the green areas, that's those are areas that I would fish. Uh, if you look at the right side of the right island of, I call it the right island of Sister Island. If you look at that little finger that comes out in the green there, there's there's a lot of um, there's green there, but it drops off. You look, look how tight the contour lines are there. Um, it's great areas for smallmouth to come from deep water and come up and ambush their prey up in shallow water. So great area to fish. Um, look for areas in green if you set it at like five feet to 12. But then look for areas where they're like tight contour lines. That means it's a deep drop off. Those are areas that are very good because the fish like to swim from the deep where they hang out and then up to feed. So um, key in those areas. Um, so that's, oh, I think we're missing summer bait. Uh, oh, there's summer baits. All right. So, uh, what are summer baits that we, we like to use? A little different, um, some same, um, let's go through some of the summer baits. First one, swim baits. Um, yes, it's a swim bait as a spring, but now I'm going to use a little bigger profile. Uh, I'm going to go to a all-terrain three eight ounce head uh with like a three aught hook and i'll throw like a three eight or even a five two or is it five two or five five kai tech um swim bait um i will go to a mag draft um the second one is which is like a, a mega bass mag draft that's a five inch mag drive i i believe um i'll slow roll that um you know big swim baits are a great bait to catch big fish in the summer, uh, slow rolling it off the rocks and deep shoals and deeper drop-offs. Uh, tubes. Tubes, if I had to pick one bait that's probably easy, that everybody can fish, if I brought my wife out fishing, I would throw a tube or a net on her bait and let her drag that thing, and it's going to get bit. It just does. Um, <clears throat> very versatile bait. You know, it looks like everything. It looks like a craw. It looks like a goby. Um, summertime, I might go to a bigger tube, three and a quarter. Um, but I'll throw the 275 in the summer, too. Um, but I'll throw it a little bigger. I'll throw it in a quarter instead of an eighth. And just because I'm fishing a little bit <coughs> deeper water. Uh, same thing with neds. I might go to a, um, a little, like a quarter ounce ned head in the summer. Um, same thing, same color pattern, um, sand. IU, green pumpkin, um, pretty much those are my, my go-to colors. Another bait I like in the summer is um, a spy bait, all right? And um, the spy baits are, are great, versatile. I don't use, I like to use it when it's slick, dead calm, like a pond out there. I can make long casts with it. And... Um, you know, I, you can count it down. It shimmies down the water like this. So let's say if you're in 20 feet of water and your front-facing sonar is showing fish swimming in 15, you can count it down to 15 and then reel slowly back along that, um, that depth into that strike zone. Um, a great rod. Um, St. Croix makes a 7-10 medium, moderate, fast legend tournament and a victory. Um, reason I use a moderate fast instead of an extra fast is anytime you got trouble hooks, um, you want the fish to eat it. You want, um, you want a little bit of forgiveness in your line. And so you don't want that hook set to snap that fish out of the mouth. So um, can you use an extra fast? Absolutely. But I think 
the moderate fast is going to give you a better hookup. All right. Um, so 710 medium moderate fast, anything moderate fast, anything longer uh, on a medium will work. Um, I didn't go through the rods, tubes, and neds. I think I went through 610, 73 medium extra fast. Uh, the swim baits, I can use the 73 on those. Uh, the mag drafts, um, I will throw it on a, um, a bait caster. Um, you know, a great rod, St. Croix came out last year, the grass. Um, you throw that on a, on a grass 710 um, heavy fast action, man, it, it just, it's an awesome rod for it. Um, it just gives you less fatigue on your, your arm the way that uh, the rod's built. Um, check it out. Thank me later when you throw a big A rig or swim bait on those grass rods. Um, and then swim bait, I use 7.3, or you can use a bait caster medium, any medium extra fast um, bait caster if you want to throw out a 3.8 yeah, um, would work. Um, dark sleeper, um, great all around, same thing. I use it on any kind of 7.3 uh, medium extra fast rod. I'll go to a bigger profile in the summer, maybe I think it's three and a half inch or three and a quarter inch, a little bigger. Um, I'll go to three eighths, I'll go to half. And I think they make a three quarter that I have some. And those are great when you're fishing in 20, 25 feet of water. Um, you want that thing to stay on the bottom as long as possible. Um, a, a bait that everybody uses, a drop shot. Uh, drop shotting is very, uh, Versatile, it's unique. Uh, it's not unique. Versatile, and it's everybody does it. Uh, my drop shot setup is usually uh, the Legend Tournament 7.3 medium light extra fast. I like the medium light for drop shotting. Um, it's got a little lighter rod. It's a little bit, um, you know, it's got that extra fast tip, so I can feel every little bite, every little nibble, and I also can feel all the rocks and pebbles, and and I can feel the transition areas. You know, the key with drop shots is using tungsten, guys. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to use tungsten. It's expensive. Well, guess what? How much do we spend for bait? And how much do we spend for rods and line? And we're going to go cheap on tungsten. You can feel everything with tungsten. Um, I throw a 3 8 on tungsten, and I'm dragging that. I can tell you when I'm in grass. I can tell you when I'm in sand. I can tell you when I'm in rocks, big or small. And so you can tell the bottom contour with your drop shot weight, um, whereas you're not going to be able to do that with lead. So uh, spend a little extra money. Tungsten is great for the drop shot. Um, drop shot bait. I got a Yamamoto shad shape warm there in white um, or perch color. Uh, those are kind of my staple. Uh, there's a lot of different brands out there uh, for drop shot. So uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but check out the, the Yamamoto Shad Shape Worm if you're looking for a drop shot bait. Um, same thing. All my setups are uh, for my drop shot. If I'm casting, I like a 7.3 medium light extra fast. And I always have a 6.10 medium light extra fast tied up with a drop shot just in case if I see something on my down imaging right below my boat that I can just drop in on them with a shorter rod. Um, so I used to use all 6.10 medium light extra fast. Uh, but ever since they came out the 7.3, I love that rod. Um, gives you a little longer cast. Gives you a longer leverage if you're catching a fish from, you know, far away to leverage the fish a little bit um, and to keep that, that hook pinned in on them. Um, so uh, those are some of the key baits uh, in the summertime for me. Um, so I hope, uh, I hope, oh, Yamamoto uh, Hula Grub is um, is something that, I'm using more, uh, throw that on a football or a swing head and just drag that around. Great bait that is overlooked that Yamamoto, Yamamoto Hula Grub has been around for a long time. Um, and so drag that on a three eighths um, football swing head or a football jig and, and see how violently that gets hit by the small mouth. So uh, that concludes my presentation. I hope these tips and these um, little things will help you uh, experience more success on the Great Lakes uh, for finding smallmouth. Um, you know, I have a Keeping It Real with Big T on Facebook page. Uh, please follow that. I, I post constantly content on fishing, um, setups, and, and, and stuff like that. So if you want to follow that page. And then I'm also on Instagram at Keeping It Real Fishing 23. Um, 
you know, these are uh, my social media handles. So if you're uh, looking for something to follow, um, follow me along as I travel around the country, especially the Great Lakes, uh, fishing smallmouth and, and hunting these things down. So I hope this helps you a little bit and hope you guys enjoy it. And hope you guys enjoy the, the seminars coming up more later at the uh, 2023 Customer Appreciation Day.